Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous Monday morning here in paradise in the end times. Now the banks of Buckeye Creek above Ridgeport, California. So while millions of clueless moron wage slaves sit in traffic to get to their depressing dead-end jobs, your old depressed doomsday hermit is going to be doing what he does every Monday morning, which is bringing you my economic meltdown roundup rant where I go on the pages of the mainstream media to see how the global industrial economy, otherwise known as the New World Order, is bringing down a planet. <coughs> I have to caution you like I did yesterday. I don't know if my battery is going to make it. Uh, so if my battery runs out, hopefully I will be able to uh, finish this rant in part two. But who knows? Maybe we'll get through it. So of course, tonight being, I think, the kickoff of the Democratic Convention, of which obviously I will never watch a minute of the big news, this week is uh, Hillary Clinton's VP pick. Some guy, probably like you, never heard of in my entire life. This guy named Tim Kaine. No clue <coughs> who this dude is, but I'm not going to give a shit. So this is the fellow who is now one bullet or one heart attack away from being the President of the United States of America. And uh, so who is Tim Kaine? Well, this is just, I guess, uh, Yahoo News Finance reporter Rick Newman. This is his spin on who is Tim Kaine. Tim Kaine is a Democrat that Wall Street can like. Yes. The uh, Virginia senator is a centrist Democrat who may turn out to be the most conventional member of either party's ticket. Uh, yes. Kane has made no notable leftward lurch to appease Bernie Sanders supporters, I bet. So what are some of the things on this guy's uh, resume? Let's see, he was a former governor, has since uh, turned into the senator. Like most other Democrats, Kane has fought congressional efforts to repeal Obamacare. And, of course, while Governor King described himself as, quote, passionate about free trade, while saying those who favor tariffs and other protectionist measures have a, quote, loser's mentality. <clears throat> yes. Uh, Kane could help make the 2016 presidential race the first in memory in which the Democratic ticket is more firmly committed to free trade than the Republican one. I can't get into a rant about now about how these unadulterated horseshit free trade agreements are a major, major weapon by the New World Order to bring down a planet. Last year, Kane was one of only 13 Senate Democrats to vote in favor of a free trade bill meant to pave the way for the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the TPP, the controversial free trade agreement awaiting approval by the Senate. Uh, Kane has praised the TPP, I bet he has. Uh, Clinton, who once supported the TPP, has now changed 
her mind as uh, has now changed her mind on it as uh, voters showed a surprising animosity toward free trade. Mm -hmm. Kane has also sided with business in other ways. Uh, like he, he's very anti-union. Kane is friendlier toward the coal industry than many Democrats. Kane has also backed expanded oil drilling off the Virginia coast, another pro-business stance. And Kane lobbied recently for easing regulations on regional banks, which claim they are being hobbled by rules meant to rein in risk-taking metabanks such as Citigroup and Bank of America. There you go. Liberal Democrats oppose Kane as Clinton's VP pick, saying he is too cozy with big business and deaf to the dissatisfaction voiced by millions of Bernie Sanders supporters fed up with crony capitalism. There you go. So another darling of Wall Street to join the darling of Wall Street, Hillary Clinton, on the ticket. Uh, and here we are again, guys. My computer, uh, you know, where some of my articles come through and some of them don't. Uh, this no shit Sherlock story, the, uh, the headline pretty much says it all is IMF, the International Monetary Fund, urges key G20 countries to spend more, to spend more on growth, meaning economic growth. No shit, Sherlock. It's the IMF, uh, with the, led by that evil bitch, Christina Lagarde, that, that's, that's what their entire job is, is to get the growth rate of the global economy, the IMF and the World Bank being uh, two of the major, major players in the New World Order, the global capitalist system bringing down a planet by bringing up the economic growth rate of the planet. No shit, Sherlock, that, that the top uh, 20 economies on this, on this planet need to make their number one priority bringing down a planet, which is another way of saying bringing up the economic growth rate. But I like uh, this. I did get a chuckle out of these uh, several versions of this associated story. IMF boss Christine Lagarde to stand trial over $400 million toppy payout, whatever that means. IMF chief Christine Lagarde, when not uh, leading the charge to bring down a planet, was ordered Friday to to stand trial in France over a massive state payout to a colorful tycoon when she was the French economy minister, dealing a setback to her stellar career. A setback to this evil bitch's stellar career. Yes. Uh, this is, I guess, a a state. No, this guy, this businessman, Bernard Tati, 
Poppy walked away with a staggering $445 million in his pocket in 2008 after Lagarde ordered the long-running row over the sale of Adidas to be resolved by arbitration. Yeah, so this is, a, once again, we talk about crony capitalism. Anybody who doesn't understand the term crony capitalism, this is France's economy minister giving this scumbag uh, $445 million uh, in, in some BS lawsuit, and then her stellar career sent her on to becoming one of the biggest planet eaters on planet Earth. <clears throat> From there to our national park systems, this has been an ongoing story for at least 20 years. This is the Christian Science Monitor's 2016 update. Yellowstone and beyond, are the national parks being loved to death? That is exactly what is happening. Our national parks being loved to death. Uh, over the course of its venerable history, Yellowstone, America's wild wonderland, has become the most iconic nature preserve on Earth. Yet never before has the world's first national park felt the squeeze of so much human adoration as this year. On many days, traffic stretches for miles outside the busy park entrance at West Yellowstone, uh, Montana. Once motorists pass through the gate, <clears throat> they confront more congestion traveling <coughs> to Old Faithful, often in the form of wildlife jams whenever there is a bull elk, bear, or buffalo roaming the roadside. These moments are usually accompanied by camera-clutching tourists lunging out of their cars, racing towards the animals as if they were cuddly denizens of a circus menagerie. Finally, upon reaching the famous geyser, the visitors find in the middle of the remote west a Yankee Stadium-sized parking lot that is often full. Uh, and what's good for Yellowstone is good for Yosemite. I'm right where I am borders Yosemite National Park about probably as the crow flies about six or seven miles from me is the border to Yosemite National Park where all of this is repeated all over this country as the clueless morons in the tourism industry bringing down a planet. From Yellowstone in Wyoming to Utah where we see pretty much the same story playing out in Florida and Lake Erie is now moved to Utah as toxic algae bloom swarms. Utah Lake seeps into farm supply, which is called karma, coming from the farms, going back to the farms. A huge toxic algae bloom in Utah has closed one of the largest freshwater lakes west of the Mississippi, sickening more than 100 people and leaving farmers who are to blame a lot for the algae bloom scrambling for clean water. <clears throat> the bacteria commonly known as blue-green algae has spread rapidly to cover almost all of the 150 square mile Utah Lake, turning the water bright anti-freeze green with a pea soup texture 
and leaving scummy foam along the shore. Uh, Jesus, its closure has caused big problems who, for people who use the lake for swimming, fishing, and other activities, and for farmers with thirsty crops. Uh, Yep. Well, the lake is largely fed by treated wastewater as well as agricultural runoff from area farms, which is feeding the algae bloom. And not exactly what they can do about it. For now, our thar ties are waiting for the bloom to run its course and clear. To stave off new blooms in coming years, the state is looking to reduce the levels of toxic algae, algae feeding phosphorus and nitrogen in wastewater that is pumped into the lake. Uh, that could be difficult, however, because cities served by those plants include some of the fastest growing cities in the nations. Quote, we have been loading the Utah Lake in one form or another for 150 years and it is now catching up with us. Do you think so? From Utah to Canada. This is North Battleford, I guess Saskatchewan, I'm not sure. Canadian authorities seek to contain oil spill moving down river. Hmm, where have we heard this story before? Authorities are building a new containment boom to fight an oil spill in a major western Canadian river, as officials said on Saturday, after the spill breached a previous barrier and threatened the drinking water of several communities along the coast. The city of North Battleford, which draws its drinking water from the North Saskatchewan River, shut its intake on Friday and switched to using groundwater. Official estimates say 1,572 barrels of heavy oil and whatever diluent leaked from Husky Energy in Inc's Saskatchewan pipeline on Thursday flowing into the river. The Calgary-based company has shut the line and expects minimal impact. Husky spokesman Mel Duvall said the cleanup is nearing completion and quote, there have been no impacts to wildlife or aquatic life. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, as long as we're talking about big oil from Bloomberg, like this just kind of sums it up. Next week, meaning this week, is as good as it gets for big oil. This week, as good as it gets for big oil. For oil companies, the second quarter might be as good as it gets. Big oil shares gained more than in any other industry, thanks to crude rising from a 12-year low. Oil profits were the best in at least three quarters for the big oil majors, including Royal Dutch Shell, Chevron Corporation, and BP. There you go. Anyway, I see 
all sorts of batteries are uh, running low and I've got five more stories to touch on. This next story from Bloomberg, this long in-depth story I don't really have time to get into titled False Dawn for Coal. Uh, and the bottom line of this is that anybody who thinks that coal uh, is, is going away, that king coal is dead, and that you can't make any money by investing in coal in the end times, Bloomberg has one thing to tell you. Since mid-May, coal has been on a tear. Benchmark thermal coal at Australia's Newcastle Coal Port has gained 24% over the past two months alone and hit its highest level in 16 months last week. And you should see this chart uh, comparing coal to copper, gold, crude oil, and iron ore. And iron ore, coal, uh, running off the charts. 24% uh, in two months is highest in 16 months. That's what's going on with, so we've gone through big oil stocks, we've gone through big coal stocks, what is going on with Monsanto stock? Uh, take a wild guess. Monsanto stock up after European Union approves biotech soybeans import. Monsanto stock is reacting favorably to the European Commission's import approval of new genetically modified soybeans for food and livestock feed. Monsanto uh, rose Friday 0.18% to $106.29 in mid morning trading after the EU said the company could import two types of its GMO soybeans. All right. Uh, okay. What is going on in the nuclear industry, at least the nuclear cleanup industry? You mentioned this one last week. This is the update. Attorney General seeks immediate help for Hanford workers. Washington's attorney, State, Washington State's Attorney General on Thursday asked a federal judge to immediately take steps to protect Hanford nuclear reservation workers from exposure to toxic chemical vapors. More than 50 workers have received medical evaluations after reporting exposures to vapors in recent months. A sprawling site near Richland in southeastern Washington, Hanford for decades made plutonium for nuclear weapons, including the plutonium for the bomb dropped on Nagasaki. The site is now engaged in a massive cleanup in the resulting radioactive waste. Yep. From Hanford nuclear cleanup site to Venezuela, several versions of this one. Why Venezuela has stopped selling Big Macs? Venezuela's McDonald's has stopped selling Big Macs due to food shortages within the country. The franchisee said that there are not enough supplies, not to dealing with the meat in this case, 
but there is not enough bread to make the iconic sandwich, which requires three pieces of bread. Yes, uh, food shortages in Venezuela have been ongoing amid an escalating economic and political crisis. And for months, the country has been experiencing severely limited access to groceries and other staples and inflation is expected to soar to 700% by the end of the year. Thousands of political and food related protests have taken place nationwide as well as looting. And as long as we're in South America, we're going to wind up in Rio de Janeiro where the Olympics, good God, and these joke summertime Olympics ramping up the one of many stories on the collapse of the Olympics. Golf's Rio return jars environmentalists as players stay away. Golf's return to the Olympic Games next month for the first time in 112 years has been marred by the absence of the sport's leading players and a court battle over potential environmental damage resulting from a new golf course. Uh, players, including the world's top four, are turning up their noses at the Olympics, citing concerns over the mosquito-borne Zika virus and the golfers lack of enthusiasm comes after the host city built an 18-hole golf course on 58,000 square meters of a natural park in the city uh, and one of these uh, tree huggers uh, Marcus Leal quote it saddens me profoundly that a space destined for conservation has been transformed for the Olympic Games. Now it is a double defeat for the city, for sports and the environment. Yep, every Olympics we, we get this story about how the local host city destroying some natural environment to bring in the clueless morons. But I'm going to wrap up my uh, global economic meltdown roundup rant so I can get back to this excellent book which I'll be reading from over the next few weeks. One World Ready or Not the Manic Logic of Global Capitalism by journalist William Grider, where this excellent 500-page book explains for anybody who does not understand this, the Manic Logic of Global Capitalism, the New World Order, the Global industrial economy, pulling out all the stops to take down a planet. But I will come back to that in future rants for this week's edition of my Economic Meltdown Roundup Rant. This is your old Doomsday Hermit saying, bye guys.